So let's, let's start the second talk. The uh, speaker is uh, Srinivasan from Chennai Mathematical Institute, and uh, his title is uh, Ezel Semigroups uh, on uh, Type 2 1 Factors. So it's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, I mean, it's not just pleasure for me, it's a very, very excited to be here. My long association with uh, Sundar is uh, not just intellectual, it's very emotional also. Um, I mean, he has been, he was my teacher, he was my PhD supervisor and a friend, colleague. And uh, I mean, some of the things he means for me, I mean, he has done for me is something uh, that was equivalent of that has been done by people like my, I mean, who are very close to me, like my wife or something who was, uh, if, I mean, the fact is very simple, if he was not, <laughs> if he was not there at some point of my life, I wouldn't be doing mathematics. So it's uh, as simple as that. So it is, uh, so I'm very happy to be here and uh, I thank Vijay for uh, asking me to give this talk. So, so let me start. So it's, uh, so I'm going to talk about some objects called uh, E-Zero semigroups on some other objects called uh, two one factors. And uh, so I will define all those things. And this is a joint work with uh, partly with uh, Oliver, Oliver T. Margat and uh, with Sundar and uh, with uh, Panju Gopal. It, I mean, I'm presenting two works here. So before, the, before defining anything, let me give some introduction. It's R.T. Powers. He initiated this theory of uh, E-Sura semigroups on both type 1 factor and type 2 1 factor. And uh, so his uh, first paper, the title is uh, Index for Semigroup of Endomorphism on uh, B of H. B of H means type 1 factor and uh, type 2 1 factor. But then there has been a lot of development in, uh, on the theory of E0 semigroups on uh, type 1 factors, which is B of H, the bounded operator on all Hilbert, I mean, all bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Uh, so the basic problem in of E0 semigroup is to provide examples and then distinguish them up to an identification called co-cycle conjugacy. So in this context, Arvason, he introduced, uh, he, who has contributed enormously for this theory of e uh, semigroups groups on type 1 factor, he introduced this notion of product system of Hilbert spaces and uh, he showed that it's a complete invariant. I mean, it's a complete, so I mean, it's, in, it's a, to study e semigroup, semi group, it's enough to study the uh, product system associated with that, product system of Hilbert spaces. So he also defined an index for uh, uh, E0 semigroups on type 1 factors. So I'm talking about two objects. One is E0 semigroup and another is a factor. And I'm talking about types. There are types of, different types of E0 semigroup. E0 semigroups are divided into three types, type 1, 2, 3. And factors are divided into three types, type 1, 2, 3. And as such, there is no relation between them. So the, I mean, so, but I'm not going to talk about the types of E0 semigroup, different types of E0 semigroup in this talk. So, so the, the, just the point is, uh, on type 1 factors, there are a lot of examples. Arvason, using his index, he classified all these type 1 E0 semigroups on type 1 factors. Using this index, classifies them. And then there are more examples, more exotic, complicated examples of type 2 and type 3 have been constructed. And uh, there is, I mean, there is some progress, but uh, it, they, we have to answer. So there are many questions regarding that are still not answered yet. So what we are going to talk about is, uh, we are going to talk about uh, E0 semigroups on a type 2 1 factors on the contrast, on the contrast to the developments in type 1 factors. The, there is very little development on type 2 factors regarding the construction and classification of E0 semigroups of type 2 1 factors. So well, there is uh, parallelly, there is uh, the product system of Hilbert spaces are kind of generalized to product system of Hilbert modules by Michael Skyde, Raja, and uh, I mean, Balaja Rambat and other people. But uh, speci specifically, a theory of E0 semigroups on type 2 1 factors, there is only one paper by Alavras, uh, Alexis Alavras. He did, so he, show, she, he proved this th theorem. I mean, he proved that, uh, actually, I'm not able to see from here. So he proved that uh, the E0 semigroups on type 2 1 factors are classified by their associated product system of Hilbert modules, an analog of uh, Arvason result. It's not exactly analog of Arvason results. Arvason result is much more deeper. I mean, the, the, the result is he defines product system abstractly and shows that there is uh, always an E0 semigroup associated with, any, e, with the product system of Hilbert spaces. Here it's not like that. If you have an E0 semigroup of type 2 1 factor, you can associate a concrete product system. And the E0 semigroups are a co-cycle conjugate, which I'm going to define, that are co-cycle conjugate. Then the product system, if and only if the product system are isomorphic. 
So Arvasan also, so Alavaras also defines an index for through something something called boundary representation, but he show, shows that that boundary representation is invariant under conjugacy, which I'm going to define. But uh, that is not clear whether that boundary representation is a co-cyclic conjugacy invariant. So in particular, whether this, I mean, this in index he defines through this boundary boundary representation. So it's not clear whether that index is a co-cyclic conjugacy invariant. In particular, there is a fundamental E0 semigroup on the I mean, something called Clifford flow, which is defined on the. This is the most uh, simplest uh, hyper, two one factor, which is hyperfinite two one factor. And this this Clifford flows, whether they are distinguished by this index, even though they have different index according to I mean whatever his definition was, they they, they have different index. It is not clear. I mean, it's not proved that. They are, of course, not they, I mean, they are different up to this identification of co-cycle conjugacy. So let me, I mean, so we are going to talk about, I mean, I'm going to end, I'm going to in the end, I'm going to say that these Clifford flows are in fact different through some other technique. So let us start, I mean, so let me start with the real mathematics. So for, for, all, for us, always H is a, always a separable Hilbert space. By B of H, I mean the star algebra of all bounded operators on H. So by a Fanayman algebra, I'm not going to use this topology, but uh, I mean, it's the, the, on B of H there is a norm topology, and there are several, so that's a very strong topology. There are several locally convex topology, and one of them is a sigma weak topology, which is actually the weak star topology. B of H is dual space; it's a dual space, of, it's dual of trace class operators, and uh, so, so the sigma weak topology is nothing but the weak star topology on B of H given by the given the pre-dual the trace class operators. And something is a factor. We call a Fanayman algebra as a factor if it's a, if it the only operator which commutes with all all of M is scalars. So in a, a Fanayman algebra will always contain identity scalars. And uh, here I mean so so they are the only operator which commutes. I mean of course the scalars commutes with the scalar times identity all commutes with every operator. And uh, if if that is they are the only operators then we call that as a factor. And so we are going to, so in this talk we are going to talk about this particular factor called two one factor. And this 2-1 factor is a factor which is infinite dimensional. I mean, there are other definitions. This is, I'm just using the equivalent definition for this talk. A 2-1 factor is an infinite dimensional factor. It's an infinite dimensional object, uh, but it admits a finite trace. So a trace, defini uh, definition of a trace is this. It's just a positive linear functional. It's a linear functional from M to C, which satisfies this property. Tau of, uh, tau of xy is tau of yx for all xy. And its important property is tau of 1 is 1. This, this is the finiteness. So it's an infinite dimensional object which satisfies some finiteness property. So here is a definition of E0 semigroups. An E0 semigroup on F1, any Fanayman algebra is a semigroup of normal, unital, star, endomorphism, which are sigma weakly continuous. So I have to explain all these uh, terms. All these terms are explained here. So it's a so it's an Fanayman algebra M, and it's a, so it's a collection of one parameter family of linear operators on M, and it's a semigroup. I mean, so alpha s t, alpha s times alpha t. When you compose, you should get alpha s plus t, and it's an endomorphism, and uh, that is it preserves the products. It preserves the star, the adjoints, adjoints in. I mean, our M is not. I mean, it's a concrete Fanayman algebra sitting inside B of H, so the adjoint is same as the adjoint for operators, and it takes uh, the identity to identity. This is the identity operator by one. I mean, the identity operator, and we need a continuity. When you fix a t, all this alpha t is sigma weakly continuous. As I said, sigma weak topology is the, just the weak star topology. And further, we need when you fix it x, the t going to this. I mean, so this is actually sigma weakly continuous. That's what I have written. So this is the lower star is the pre-dual of this. So it's a t going to rho of alpha t x when when yeah, rho. I'm sorry. This should be rho. Sorry, this, I have written x. This should be rho. Okay, this is a mistake. So when rho comes from this uh, pre-dual, then t going to this. This is a complex valued function that has to be continu continuous. So it's just for definition. I mean, I'm not going to use. I'm not going to prove anything. So I mean, I'm not going to show any proof of anything, so this is not, I mean, we are not going to use this. So let me give examples of uh, E0 semigroup. To, to give example, let me fix this. I'm going to give two examples, and this is something I'm going to use uh, this. I'm going to use these things in common for both the examples, so let me fix that. So KB, for me, small k is a real Hilbert space. I take a real Hilbert space. And uh, this KC, by say K superscript C, is the complexification of the real Hilbert space. And TT, I'm going to use ST for something else. Usually, this will be denoted by ST. So because I'm going to use ST for something else, I call this TT. TT is the shift semigroup. This is a unilateral shift on L20 infinity k defined by this. I mean, it just it, you take any function f in L20 infinity, then TTF of the, of the function at any point s, I mean, uh, s plus t is going to be the value at s, I mean, value at f of, I mean, value at 
s for the function f okay it just shifts the function f so this is a well known operators this is a semi group of operators it's well known that it's semi group and they are continued there is a continuity in t strongly continuous they are all isometries okay so this so i am going to use this i am using this semi group of uh, operators in l2 l0 infinity we are going to get a uh, e0 semi group so here is the fundamental example of uh, e0 semi groups on a 2 1 factor so as before i i take this k k is uh, that hilbert space i have already talked about then i am taking uh, taking this l2 0 infinity functions i mean so maybe I, this is all square integrable function taking values in k okay so so i consider h to be the anti symmetric fox space of this so i don't want to define anti symmetric fox space i mean this is some sort of exponentiation this is i mean there are different ways of exponentiating hilbert space this is one so one such thing and h is a anti symmetric fox space of this l2 0 infinity kc and uh, so in the anti symmetric fox space there is a something called a vacuum vector i mean it will be so that vacuum vector i am denoting by omega then anti and the anti symmetric fox space these are all called is called what are called creation operator so if you have a if you have on omega it acts it takes omega to f and it takes anything i mean any so there, there are these finite particle vectors it takes it just attaches i mean but this is the anti symmetric tensor not the usual tensor it attaches a f to the to, to the left of uh, any any finite particle vector or any vector in that so so these are all bounded operators i mean in symmetric fox space this won't be bounded operator so because it's anti symmetric fox space this will be bounded operator so we have defined this a star f then you take that joint which is af then we define this u of f to be just the average of these two function so i am taking remember i am taking f from this uh, real hilbert space so this u of f will be a self adjoint operator so these self adjoint operators in fact they will be self adjoint unitary i think or at least constant times uni unitary so they will satisfy this this relation this commutation relation uf ug ug uf will be the inner product between f and g times 1 so if f and g are orthogonal they will anti commute for example this is anti commutation relation so they will satisfy this relation and if you take the fanheim algebra generated by this uf okay so that is that is the hyperfinite to one factor i mean that that is a, it's a well known it's a it's a, there is one there is only one such uh, hyperfinite to one factor so it's isomorphic to that hyperfinite to one factor and let me i mean it's in standard form if i mean i will talk about it later anyway so it is i mean this this m sitting in b of this b of this h is in standard form okay so i will talk about the standard form uh, later in uh, after some two two three slides that's because uh, because i want to define this for i mean i want this to be self adjoint and i mean uh, uh, yeah yeah so i mean so i want i have to say that this uf if you evaluate on omega omega that will give this i mean the product of uf that will give the trace so so the, my e0 semi group is defined i mean so i want to define the e0 semi group on m and uh, so i so i define on this uh, u of f i mean this so b beta d zero semi group beta t defined on u of f is u of ttf so using this tt i define this uh, beta t and this i mean this is of course defined on the generators and the fact is it will extend to a unique u zero semi group of course it has to be unique because uf uh, generates m and this extends to a unique u zero semi group from m so similar thing we can do on a free fox space so let uh, h be a free fox space i take the same l2 0 infinity kc so i mean this complexification i take because i mean fox spaces are defined for complex uh, hilbert space so i take this h be the free fox space and omega be the vacuum vector again uh, there's a vacuum vector in free fox space then for f so again this is same as the cre same creation operator except that it's not anti symmetric tensor it is just the, it is the usual tensor so i take i define l of f is the left creation operator so which is which takes uh, the vacuum vector to f and uh, any other ortho orthogonal to a uh, vacuum vector it, it just attaches a f on the left free fog, free fog. full fog yeah that's free fog yeah full fog so the fanheim algebra generated by this sf sf is just the average of l f and the l f star that's going that's well known that it's uh, isomorphic to the free group sub factor i mean the free group sub factor with infinite uh, infinite generators which is f infinity so it's isomorphic with that 
and again m is in standard form we can again define the same I mean in a similar way we can define an E0 semi group alpha T of S of S of F is S of T T F for all F in this it is defined on the generators and it will extend to a E0 semi group on the on the full I mean on this uh, F in L of A on this M. Okay, so now still I have not so I have defined E0 semi group I have given two examples two families of examples and there are many fam I mean more families actually. So then I want to talk about uh, I mean now I want to say what we what I have been talking about the identification within E0 semi groups. So to define this identification the identification is what is called the co-cycle conjugacy which I want to define. To define that first I define what a co-cycle is. A co-cycle is I mean so if you have a alpha is an E0 semi group from M then a co-cycle for an E0 semi group is a collection of unitary operators which satisfies this co-cycle identity that is just all us all us alpha s if you just compose them you get us plus t which is just is just the co-cycle identity it is a co-cycle for alpha s then if you have a co-cycle then you can define a alpha u a perturbation of alpha t like this which will again be a which is again a e0 semi group the co-cycle property will ensure that this is also a e0 semi group I mean which is also it is also a semi group. So when we say so we say two E0 semi group alpha on M and beta on I should have put here respectively. If you have two E0 semi groups on N and M and M, I mean alpha and beta respectively on M and N, then alpha and we say alpha and beta are conjugate if the, this there is an isomorphism between them which intertwines these two E0 semi groups. So if there is an isomorphism between M to N which uh, satisfies this relation. If you pull it back and act alpha T and take t, apply theta on that, then you should get beta T. So we say something is cocycle conjugate, they are not actually conjugate, alpha is conjugate to a cocycle perturbation of that that is beta alpha beta are cocycle conjugate if there exists a cocycle like that then you can form this perturbation and uh, beta is conjugate to alpha u so this is cocycle conjugate so we want to classify i mean conjugate classifying up to conjugacy is beyond question so it's too difficult so we talk about cocycle conjugacy so from here onwards i am going to talk about that's for i mean all these things that the, the cocycle conjugacy can be defined for general van Neumann algebra so if here onwards we fix m is a type 2 1 factor i mean we have only two examples so one is hyperfinite to 1 factor one is a free group uh, uh, free group factor then we, we assume that m is in the standard this is what is what i said as standard form m is contained in b of l2 m tau what it means is by by definition by i defined m uh, by a 2 1 factor it has a trace and using the trace you can define an inner product on that okay it's a, i mean the inner product between any any two x and y in m is tau of x star y and that will give an inner product you, you complete that m with respect to that inner product that is what is this l2m which is a hilbert space and uh, m will act on this l2m by left multiplication and that is what that is uh, that's what i mean by m is contained in that so this is like uh, the uh, i mean see functions on i mean on l2 on uh, any l2 the continuous functions will act so, i mean this is not exactly like that. l infinity can act so it's, a, it's something very similar to that so there is an identity function here identity operator in m so that is what so that will sit inside this L2M2 as a vector and that vector I call it call as omega. So that is the cyclic and separating vector. I mean if you know GNS construction this is exactly the GNS construction with respect to the tau. So this is what I call a standard form for an omega 2 1 factor. So now I define a operator. So now I have alpha t. Alpha t is an E0 semi group acting on M. Now I define a ST and I, this is an operator on L2, L2M okay this is a Hilbert space operator that is an endomorphism alpha it is an endomorphism I define a Hilbert space operator ST where ST acting on any X omega by X omega I mean this L2M tau consists of basically M it, M is contained in that and that sits as M omega okay I call this X omega is basically the X here okay X or X, X hat or something. So ST X omega acting on this alpha T I mean X, ST acts on this x omega I mean uh, st takes x omega to alpha t x omega okay. Since the, the trace is unique using the trace uniqueness of trace or something one can verify that this is st is actually an isometry and it satisfies this relation one can verify that this relation is satisfied. So this relation is what is called st satisfying any operator satisfying this relation is what is called a unit and I am defining unit here so but this unit this particular unit this is special because it is defined like this using this representation. So this particular unit we call as the canonical canonical unit or a vacuum unit associated with this alpha and this st is invariant under conjugacy but it is uh, need not be invariant under cosecal conjugacy. So there may be other units st is a unit there may be other units and uh, so a unit for an alpha for this uh, E0 semi group alpha is a family of uh, semi group I mean so it is important that this satisfies two property one is it has to be a semi group 
okay it's a semi group i mean ts tt is ts plus t it's a semi group of operator and it satisfies some continuity condition that is what the strong continuity i mean so and it uh, satisfies this intertwining property ttx equal to alpha tx tt i mean i have just written it the other way is the same thing alpha tx tt is same as ttx okay it satisfies for all x in for all x in m it satisfies this for all t this is satisfied so this is what is called a unit for an alpha and the collection of unit i denote by u alpha which is a, well which a, one can prove that this is actually a co cycle conjugacy invariant i mean the one need to i mean if you have a co cycle then you can left multiply a unit to get a, a unit for the other one so it's it's well known that it's a co cycle conjugacy invariant so given an e0 semi group i have defined some unit and unit is one co cycle conjugacy i mean we want to distinguish we want to we want invariance for e0 semi group and the units are one such uh, invariants there is another invariant this is what is called gauge co cycle i mean there is co cycle i have already defined a gauge co cycle is a local co cycle i mean it's it is just it's a co cycle which satisfies this condition of course by our definition co cycle has to be in m and it has to commute with the, by this i mean com commute on okay by this it com commutes with the range of all, it commutes with all alpha tx for every x in m so that's what i mean by this it's in the commutant of this for all t so then this g alpha we denote by the i mean the this g alpha is all gauge co cycles so one can show that this g alpha forms a group with respect to multiplication i mean you, you can compose two unitary operators i mean each t ut if you have ut vt then you can compose ut and vt you get another wt equal to ut vt that gives another that's again a gauge co cycle so it's a uh, and uh, star will give the inverse so it's a group it's a group under usual group group operation and this group is again a co cycle conjugacy invariant you can show that this is also a co cycle conjugacy invariant for alpha so we have got two co cycle conjugacy invariant and we would like to compute it for our examples so before talking about i mean i will come back to this unit and co cycle i mean gauge co cycles again so before that i want to talk about uh, so, so i want to define so given i have a m which is a 2 1 factor which is sitting inside b of h where h is our l2 m then i want to say m i want to define a, something called a dual e0 semi group i want to define as a commutant there is a natural way of doing it so if we have this uh, so this is 2 1 factor so you can also there is a tomita takasaki theory if you don't know tomita takasaki theory it's all right you can always define this operator x omega going to x star omega which is uh, which will in this case when it is 2 1 factor in this case it will be a it's it's not a linear operator it's a conjugate linear operator but it will be anti unitary so what is called an anti unitary it be it's a unit it will satisfy the unitary property it will be a j square i mean j star will be j so it will be a anti unitary on this l2 m so using that anti that anti unitary add of j will take m to m commutant and m i mean it it will be given a opposite isomorphism between m and m commutant so using that opposite isomorphism i can define an alpha t prime on m prime m prime is the commutant of m so i define this alpha t prime x prime as alpha t i mean this will bring this x prime is in m prime so this j x prime j will bring it back to bring it to m i apply alpha t and then take it back to m prime so this gives a then opposite e0 semi group or complementary e0 semi group or dual e0 semi group whatever one wants to call so given a e0 semi group on alpha t alpha t, given a e0 semi group on m i have defined an e0 semi group on m commutant so i define something called a mu unit or a multi unit for an e0 semi group alpha by i mean this is some some operator tt which is a unit for both alpha and alpha prime i call it as a multi unit okay, it should be a unit for both of them so the collection of uh, all mu units or multi units is a co cycle one can show that it is a co cycle conjugacy invariant it's not very clear actually i mean in the sense that i mean if uh, people who are working on isero semi group it's clear that units are co cycle conjugacy conjugacy invariant so here this this proves that it's actually a co cycle conjugacy invariant the point is if ut is a co cycle and if you have alpha this alpha prime is also a co cycle conjugacy invariant we can define this u prime and that will be a co cycle for that and uh, the the the, the, the 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 prime for this alpha u will be alpha alpha prime perturbed by this u prime okay so that that the, the, this alpha prime whatever we do that's a co cycle that's a invariant under co cycle perturbation so this then then we have this you can I mean the, usually this uh, the units are preserved i mean the, the the correspondence between units for the co cycle conjugacy two two e zero semi group with the co cycle conjugate is by multiplying by the co cycle but here we do it by ut ut prime so that will give again a multi multi unit and you get so the multi unit is a co cycle conjugacy invariant for that the collection of multi units is a co cycle conjugacy invariant so if we have two units xt yt so i i mean i was calling ut tt so if you have xt yt two units you can take this xt star yt 
this will so first this will xt star yt because it is a unit it will commute to the m I mean this intertwines alpha t and identity so this will intertwine identity in the, I mean alpha t so this will intertwine this will this will be in the this xt star yt will commute with m and since it is a unit for m prime also I mean alpha prime and m prime also it will commute to the m prime also since m and m prime generates the b of h it will commute with whole b of h so it will be a scalar so xt star yt is a scalar but since because of the multiplicative property it has to be e power something it will be multiplicative so that is why I get this e power some something there I get a constant this is a scalar which depends on this xt and yt that is what I have called it is e power ct that c depends on xt and yt so xt yt is equal to e power ct xt 1 times 1 it is a scalar. So, we given any two units we get this scalar which is called the covariance function. So, we get a function from this u alpha so this is the collection of all multi units we get a function from here to here and which is uh, which is I mean there is a condition called it is a conditionally positive definite and when we have a conditionally positive definite function like this we can construct a Hilbert space it is well known that one can construct the Hilbert space I do not want to go through that. So, the dimension of the Hilbert space I call that as an index for alpha the dimension of that Hilbert space and uh, this index is of course a cosecular conjugate, conjugate invariant but then this is not the index defined by Alvaras as we will see I mean as uh, I will show that this is not same as the index of the index of alpha. So now we have a different question so now we have defined an index for uh, E0 semicolon now we have a different question the question is suppose if we have this uh, alpha t we, we have I mean so we have alpha on m prime and alpha prime on m prime. So, does there exist a e 0 semigroup alpha 2 on this b of h such that uh, it restricts to alpha on m and alpha prime on m prime. So, in case such a e 0 semigroup alpha 2 exists on this b of h we say that this alpha alpha is extendable and in that case this index is nothing but the power service and index which is already defined which is the index of this alpha 2. So, here is the so some I was talking about gauge cocycles. This is something about that gauge cocycles. If we have two gauge cocycles, then we can associate a scalar within that. I mean, for that cocycle, this is not clear for any. I mean, this is this is in. I mean, this is uh, this is a particular case of two one factor. Okay, it's not. Uh, we have the trace because of the trace. We can prove this uh, remarkable identity like this. So it satisfies this trace. If you apply trace on this, it satisfies this identity. So because of that. I mean, you, you can you can embed the, this uh, cos these cosecycles into units by applying on vacuum vectors. Then applying the trace, you will get this. So this satisfies this uh, identity. Because of that, we can be given any two U T star tau T by applying trace. We can get this uh, get this scalars. So again, this scalars is again conditionally positive definite, and we can construct a Hilbert space called H alpha. We call this in, in Hilbert space H alpha, and this H alpha as a dimension of course and that dimension we call it as the gauge index. So, we have defined two kinds of index one is the index through coming from multi units which is uh, the unit for both alpha and alpha prime. Now, using this g alpha we can define a we can define an index which is this gauge index. So, one would like to compute these two index for our specific examples and uh, so here is the result. So, the I mean I am just saying that these two index are not useful. So, after doing all the computations we find find that these two index are not actually useful. So, that is what I am I am just saying. So, this does not does not actually distinguish those E0 semigroups. Uh, well, this is a long computation I mean in the sense that uh, so in uh, anti-symmetric Fox space it is not easy to compute the units. So, using stochastic integration we can actually associate for any units are multiplicated uh, units I will talk about it later if you have a unitary cocycle you can associate uh, I mean th that is in bijection there is a bijective map between you unitary cocycles and unital I mean unitary cocycles and uh, multiplicative cocycles they are multiplicative cocycles and additive cocycles using that we can compute the additive cocycles and we, one can prove using some computation which I am not showing here one can prove that uh, there is only one multiplicative identity is the only multiplicative cocycle there. So, that will imply that uh, the dimension the gauge dimension is 0 I will show the index is 0 I mean I am not I am going to show I am going to give a reason why the index is also 0. So, in the case of free flow we have not calculated the index yet the, uh, the, the index coming from multi units, but we can calculate the again using the same idea of this additive cocycles etcetera we can show that the uh, the gauge index is again 0 here. So, it is just I am just saying that 
to I mean this is of course it is important to calculate these two these indexes and other things is a important invariant I am just showing I am just saying that these two indexes are not actually useful. So this shows that it is not this index is not same as Alvarez index Alvarez index is uh, n for Clifford flow yeah, infinity for free flow so I mean I am not I, I did not talk about this so it is it is not same as that but that is not co-cycle conjugate, conjugate invariant so that is the problem with that. So now so how to show that Clifford flows are in fact uh, uh, I mean uh, are different in uh, with respect to this co-cycle conjugate invariant. So let us uh, so again let m be a 2 1 factor and it is it's, it's, it's in a standard way then I can define this E t. So E t is all intertwiners in L 2 m B of L 2 m which satisfies this relation I mean for unit I said there is an intertwining property um, further it has to be a unit it has to be a uh, semi group also here I am not there is no condition like that it is all such t given a fixed I fix a t I take all operators in B of h which intertwines alpha t and the identity representation okay it just satisfies the relation and similarly I define something for alpha t prime like this then I take the intersection of h t is the intersection of these two things okay e t intersection e t prime. So this forms I have not defined what a product system is this h t frames so I have not defined the super product system also the h t forms what is called a super product system well what a product system is you have this family for each e t actually this will form what is called a product system of Hilbert modules m prime Hilbert module this will form what is called a product m, m Hilbert m Hilbert modules and I mean I, I do not want to go into that language. So, but these are all Hilbert spaces H T or Hilbert spaces I mean because if you take something here then you, you if you have T and S in this H T because it is in T star S will be in M cometon as well as in M. So, I mean as I have already uh, talked about it for units so it will be it will form it will give an inner product on this H T. So, H T is a Hilbert space but it will not form a product system in the product system in the sense a product system is something if you take H S tensor H T there is a unitary map where is a well defined unitary map from H S tensor H T to H S plus T. So, in this case we will not have a unitary map we will have an isometry map. So, he, here at this point I have to say that I mean Raja Rambat and uh, Mithun they have done something called uh, inclusive system which is something which is not which is the opposite of this there one has the isometry from H s plus t to H s tensor H t here we have an isometry from H s tensor H t to H s plus t. So, it is the other way so this I call I mean this is I mean Kostler called this a super product system so I am calling this a super product system that is called a sub product system or something. So, this H t will form a super product system and it is of course a co-cycle conjugacy invariant for this alpha. So, so this is something we have shown I mean this E t which is defined through intertwiners which actually this is a this is not strongly closed when S t is not I mean when S t is not a unitary which is just an isometry. So, in that case it this is not actually strongly closed if you take the strong closure of M s t that will give E t prime if you take the strong closure of this that will give E t. So, this is just I am stating I'm, I mean I am this is used in the proof of that but I am not I mean this is not relevant for the talk when I am not prove when I am not going to prove anything. So, here is this condition we talked about extendability I mean extendability means we have alpha on m so then we can define an alpha prime on m prime. So, then this alpha alpha prime that can be extended to something on the whole of b of h uh, so we talked about that extendability if there is a E 0 semi group on whole of b of h which restricts to alpha and alpha prime on m and m prime respectively. So, this is the equivalent condition for the extendability alpha is extendable if and only if alpha t m and alpha t prime m prime this generates a factor. I mean this is the range of alpha t this is the range of alpha t prime they together should generate a factor or so this is a easier condition this is difficult to check whether something is a factor but this is also not so easy anyway. So, I use this condition so I mean to prove something I use this condition. So, this set is a, this is a set I mean this is x coming from commutant of these two these two ranges and y coming from m then we can so omega is fixed then we can apply x alpha t alpha t y omega then that is a total set in h. So, this is this is a equivalent to saying that something is extendable or the another equivalent condition is h t actually forms a product system. In fact, h t if it forms a product system it will be the product system corresponding to that extended e 0 semi group. So, for Clifford flow we have computed this uh, h t this h t we can explicitly compute this h t well I, I, I mean this is h t can be identified h t is a space of operators here I am talking about something vectors. I mean this is well known that this operate this vectors can be realized as operators some sort of shift operators. So, this h t is nothing but I have put a 2 n here. So, this is all even particles I mean this is all even 
even particle space. See, anti-symmetric Fox space contains uh, both uh, finite particles. It's just the subspace generated by the even particle, even particle vectors. That is exactly the this HT for this Clifford flow. So that would imply that this is not a product system. This won't form a product system because if we take HS plus T, HS, HS tensor are HT. That HS plus T, the range will be of generated by, I mean, generated by vectors of foreign length. I mean, it's not generated by. If we, eh? ah, so I am extremely sorry. This has to be T. <laughs> it's not L two zero one T. That is L two zero T. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't notice. This is HT is uh, L two zero T. Okay. I'm all. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. So I, I think I don't have time to explain how this operator comes through. But the, this, you can apply this. I mean, this tensor product is defined through the shift, and this will this won't actually form a product system. So that would imply that Clifford flow of any rank. Yeah, I mean, we ex expected that this should be extendable. This will in fact extend to the car flow. There is something called car flow. We see that this will extend to car flow. The point is, it doesn't extend. So this is a shock. So nasty shock actually. So this, this doesn't extend. So then we can show that using this uh, whatever the super product system, we can show that if Clifford flow of rank n, I haven't said what is rank. There is a Hilbert space small k. The dimension of that Hilbert space is the rank. Okay. So if Clifford flow of rank n is not cosecyclic conjugate to Clifford flow of rank m, if n is not equal to m, this is this we can. I mean, if suppose, they, I mean, if they are cosecyclic conjugate, then the super product system has to be isomorphic. But if they are isomorphic, then we can show that uh, the I mean, so there is this L two K. Then we can talk about all products. We get. I mean, there is a product system you can associate to this super product system. If they are isomorphic, then one can do something and show that the product system is also isomorphic. Okay. I mean, one has to do some calculation. One can show that they are isomorphic. That will imply that the car flow of rank n is isomorphic to cosecyclic conjugate to car flow of rank m. So, which is not true. So, this is not true. So, that is the proof. So, so all these Clifford flow are not cosecyclic conjugate to each other. So, this is the proof, and we still don't know about free flow. But there is something we can show using Alvarez result. So, one can do the same thing again. The, the, so, there is this. You can take all these even products of this U. I mean, there should be a bracket here. U F one up to U F two n. I mean, this this our hyperfinite two n factor sitting inside operators on this anti-symmetric Fox space. They are generated by these U F. But if you take only even products. That will form an. Uh, that will give a. That will. That's also isomorphic. I mean, you, you take the finite algebra generated by that. That will also be isomorphic to hyperfinite two-one factor. But then, so the, then you can restrict this Clifford flow to that subfactor. That will give another. That we can call that as even Clifford flows. So one can do the same thing, the same kind of thing. Then you can show that the even Clifford flows are not cosecyclic conjugate within themselves for different m and n. And also, one can show that uh, this I use Alvarez proof. I don't see. I mean, the point is, if I can prove, I mean, the even Clifford flows are not cosecyclic conjugate the original Clifford flows. So the proof is, the point is, I, I haven't. I mean, so we got this uh, HT, which is generated by these even pro, even tensors, even anti-symmetric tensors, that doesn't have a unit. There is only one unit for this. I mean, that one can prove that that doesn't have a unit. So it has only one unit. That's so there has to be a vacuum unit. So in this case, when there is only one unit, the boundary representation of Alvarez will be a cosecyclic conjugacy invariant, because I mean that's conjugacy invariant. So unit will be taken to it as two. There is no other choice. So but then these both these even car flows and Clif even Clifford flows and this Clifford flows, they have only one unit. So boundary representation is in fact a conjugacy representation. So using Alvarez, Alvarez has proved that uh, they they have different boundary. They, they have same left boundary representation, but not the right boundary representation are different. So he has proved that. So using that, one can prove that. This even Clifford flows are not cosecyclic conjugate to the original Clifford flows. So that's all. Thank you. So any question or comments? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because you are not. No, I mean because the units we define on standard representation. So I mean we have to. So it, we use only standard representation because all these modules, it's not coming from. I mean all these intertwiners are not coming from M. They are coming from B of L to M. So one has to fix this representation. The commutant has to be fixed. Everything has to be fixed. So we have to use standard representation. Otherwise, we have to use a different theory. I mean this certainly won't work. I mean this depends on the standard representation. So. I don't know.
no. I mean, the, I mean, the, the, the East Rosa Migro, all the even automorphism is not understood well. So I don't know whether I, I don't think so. But there are factors where it doesn't allow East Rosa groups. I mean, the, so East Rosa group means it has a fact, sub factor of infinite index. So I mean, so, some questions like that can be answered. But I don't think a East Rosa group can determine. A, I don't know. I mean, so at least it's not developed. The theory is not developed yet. Thank you.